Okay, I'll go back to my video on um, wastage. And there's lots of wastage around me right now. It's it's making this video extremely bright. I don't know what I've done. I've downloaded this new software for my camera. It's really bright. It was really dark. Now it's really bright. Anyway, I've made videos about how they should um, they should pass a law which. Um, The law should be passed to make at least 25% of all new roofing uh, solar powered, whether it be uh, solar collectors or solar voltaics. Um, really, they ought to make wall coverings, uh, which have got solar collectors on. So during the day when you've got the curtains open, the wall coverings are charging, giving you electricity back and uh, at night when you've got the light switched on I mean it's illuminating the room yeah but you're still wasting quite a lot of uh, power because you need the power to illuminate the room and you need that amount of wattage to illuminate the room so you can see but you only need enough for you to see so all you need is a stream of photons flinging out the light bulb hitting off a surface that you're looking at directly or what's within your periphery yeah and then those photons come into your eyes and that's all you need yeah and if there's two people in the room you only need the amount of photons for two people and if there's four people you need the amount of photons for four people but the light bulb or the the um, illuminating device in your rooms whether it be a front room a function room in a pub a function room in a uh, hotel or whatever room that you're in watching this now um, the light bulb is giving off enough light that you could have the room literally packed so tightly that you can't move and there'd still be enough light from one light bulb or one light emitting device um, for all those people and then you could chop all their heads off you know, just hypothetically and then stack the room completely full with those heads and there'd still be enough room for that amount of eyes then you could pull the eyes out and then fill the room with all those eyes and there'd still be enough photons coming out of that light bulb for all those eyes so if the wall coverings were made out of um, solar voltaics as well you wouldn't have so much wastage off the light bulbs so we've created low energy light bulbs now which instead of using 100 watts of uh, energy per hour 100 watts per hour or whatever you want, however you want to say it they use about 11 12 watts of power so you know it's a good 87 percent efficiency gain since we came up with these new light and energy light bulbs i think got one handy it'd be amazing if i did one day i'll put just put pull it out just put it out to the ceiling um but just then just then imagine if you bought a picture Let's say it was a uh, a copy of a Mozart or something like that. Mozart, doof. That's some music, mate. <laughs> a copy of a uh, Rembrandt, would that be? I don't know. And the pixels in the picture were solar voltaics, but different colours. Yeah, just imagine that. Yeah, and then imagine you. Um, your wall coverings. Instead of buying some paint and slapping it on, you. Um, you bought a panel and stuck it on and it was let's say red and had blurry bits on it and it was a solar voltaic when you switch your light on it's only using 11 watts but it's putting out waste photons and I'm just guessing that if you put enough solar voltaics in a room you could probably possibly go over unity <laughs> there's a bloke out there he designed a, um, a new that it was called new wave heat engine or something like that and what he did was he took solar voltaics old ones and uh, arranged them in cylinders and then he made a um, inside these cylinders he made combustion tubes now these combustion tubes basically what they were what um, he, he fed oxygen and gas into the tubes or oxygen and uh, uh, petrol or methanol or whatever it was into the tubes just sprayed it in little bits and ignited it 
and you had like a cylinder you had like a cylinder and then around the inside of the cylinder you had solar voltaics glued to the wall yeah and then all wired into the batteries and then it took the combustion tube and put the combustion tube in the center and then fed oxygen and uh, a fuel methanol or petrol or hydrogen whatever it was into that tube and ignited it and then this tube here glowed red even white heart in fact it glowed white heart all right this tube here glowed white heart inside the cylinder where the solar voltaics was and he closed the cylinder off so none of this light could 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 escape it was all trapped with inside the cylinder so all that heat and all that light was contained within the cylinder where the solar voltaics were and this engine was the most efficient heat engine ever designed it's just amazing yeah and that was with 15 year old 20 year old solar voltaic panels now just imagine that with the latest technology of solar voltaic pa panels like i can't i've, I've gone research what the name of the engine was i can't remember what it was now yeah but i know he made an engine which was basically around about 18 inches wide and about 18 inches high and about four inches five inches wide so it was like you know like a small base station like, a, like all these new miniature base stations uh, computers that you see yeah not like my brick which is about 10 foot high and 10 foot wide <laughs> oh. anyway and that this this little box i'll just explain which is the size of a small modern computer tower powered a car a 150 mile an hour car that's how efficient it was um new wave heat i can't remember what it was called now okay anyway solar voltaics everywhere you know, cameras everywhere solar voltaics everywhere i'm extremely tired can you tell i've been up because my computer's been crashing constantly i figured out right i downloaded this piece of software off the internet and no i didn't so i'm telling a lie i bought a magazine with a uh, disc on the front of it and it got a hardware testing facility on it that was it i didn't download it and i tested me ram and it turns out that there was a stick of ram inside my computer which was telling my computer stupid things to do it was telling wrong memory addresses and uh, so when I was loading up a program it was spreading the spreading it out in the hard drive wrong and overwriting all the bits of information willy-nilly <laughs> here it is here who is it there here we go spit it out That is the offending piece of equipment. That bit there. Right, I thought I got a virus on the internet. But this little baby here, which is DDR333 RAM. Uh, I know it's not very fast, DDR333, but there you go. This offending biatch here, which is making, because I've had to pull it out, it's making my computer page file all the time. So I have to move the computer out of the room because it's going <laughs> constantly because it's page filing. <laughs> it sounds disgusting. That's why it's a bit quiet in my room because it's uh, the other side of the wall now. There's a couple of holes drilled through the wall to get the cables through. <laughs> they they're were there anyway. Um, yeah, this this biatch here. I thought it was a virus. I thought I got a virus, and uh, I hadn't. I got a piece of duff memory. It's my first bit of duff memory ever. You know, I fragged hard drives. I fragged loads of other stuff. I've never fragged memory before. Oh, well, that's my first bit of memory fragging. Memory fragging, Sten style. All right, that's it. Ten minutes. Stop. Stop.